The following presentation was recorded at the 2012 Southeast Linux Fest in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following Diamond sponsors in 2012 for helping make these videos possible. Is that uh, time? We just start. Uh, my name is Jimmy Young. I work for the uh, NODB, NODB team in Oracle. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about the um, uh, performance uh, aspect of NODB. Okay, this is a brief uh, agenda. Um, we're going to briefly go through existing some existing performance features. Then after that, we talk about two new releases, uh, one is 5.5 and 5.6. Both uh, happened after the, uh, Oracle acquired the uh, MySQL. So 5.5 uh, release is uh, last year, and we, this year we're going to release 5.6. Uh, so, does everyone here know InnoDB? Are uh, very familiar with it. Um, so, um, so I briefly just go through. InnoDB is uh, uh, has been um, transaction storage engine for MySQL since 2001. Uh, then, after Oracle acquires uh, MySQL last year, it became the uh, uh, default storage engine. It used to be my ISM. Now, the InnoDB become the default storage engine for MySQL. So you get a MySQL out of the box, you have InnoDB. So if you want to use other storage engine, you have to specify. Eventually, we're going to um, obsolete my ISM. So um, it's asset compliant. Uh, it supports low-level locking. And uh, it has a couple of uh, quite innovative uh, features. Uh, make it uh, different from the other storage engine. Uh, one is the insert locking, uh, insert buffering, and the other is adaptive hash index. So those are two things uh, make it quite unique. Um, there are other things like uh, you use bitmap for the uh, low, level, uh, low locking, uh, but that's uh, not, uh, uh, I'm not gonna go through that today, but I'll just go briefly, quickly on those two unique features uh, that makes InnoDB fast. Okay, so one, the first one is the insert buffering. Um, insert buffering is kind of thing says, um, I want to update a secondary index. Uh, sometimes the index leaf page. It's not in the buffer pool. Uh, I don't need to bring this particular uh, page into buffer. Uh, I just cache it in a uh, in memory structure called the insert buffering. So insert buffering itself is a, a special index, but it's not uh, particular to any table or uh, any uh, uh, in any uh, index itself. It's just a generic uh, structure, in memory structure, but for everything that inserts and you found that particular um, page, the index leaf page, they are not in the buffer. So the benefits is that you cache it and they make it sequen uh, sequential uh, low the next time. Or you also, you reduce the I.O. So uh, next time, say some operations need to bring this leaf page back in, and you found there's some updates uh, needed for this particular page, then you just merge it. So for, for user, it's transparent. Uh, they don't see anything different other than uh, um, maybe a, a slow merge activity happening. So the performance uh, um, study shows it's seven times faster uh, without these things. Um, so this is a kind of a very important feature that make InnoDB stands out. Um, it's uh, insert a, a lot faster than others. So later I'm going to talk about in 5.5, we extend this to other DML for this uh, insert buffering. Uh, so now the name changes to uh, change buffering and no longer refer to insert buffering. 
So it also has some benefits on the solid state, uh, storage, SSD, those kind of thing. Okay, uh, the next one is adaptive hash index. Again, it's, uh, it's an index uh, resident in the memory, and it's mimic in-memory database. So it says if you can hold everything in memory, then I don't need to go to disk to fetch it. So the idea is that if I do some query on some kind of key value things uh, frequently, I can just uh, cache them. So use the hash index. So next, this query comes in. Uh, also looking for the same key. I don't need to go to disk. I don't need to do a, 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 a index a tree search. I just go through this hash index and get a value right away. And uh, uh, by default, you get like a 1 64 uh, size of the uh, uh, buffer pool dedicated to this uh, uh, adaptive hash index. And uh, so it search your, uh, notice your query pattern, and if you find keep on searching this particular key, then it just cache the key value. So it cache the result, and uh, what next time it comes in, you don't need to go through all the process to, to do the query again. So the performance shows two times faster, and if you really do actively uh, index join, index access, it's five times faster. So that's another thing, yeah. So it's going to automatically build that if it sees a pattern where it believes it. Yes, yeah. So it is some algorithm says, well, uh, if I access this page uh, multiple times and I, I'm looking for this key, I just build a hash index on that. Okay. And then your comment there about sysbench. Yeah. If it's a, you know, a huge sysbench benchmark where I'm far greater than, than RAM. Yes. Well, uh, yeah, well, this is, um, I, I think it's, it's kind of uh, depend on your query pattern. So you're saying that I always query a unique key, I never repeat, and I'm going to exhaust this uh, hash index. You always can beat it. But this is a, a generic suspension uh, by default, and it shows um, this kind of thing. One last question. Would, would another name Oh, uh, well, row cache, uh, well, yeah, uh, same thing, but it's, it's a hash index. So I think it's more uh, just strictly tell you that it's a hash index. How are we doing, uh, going to, how, what, what kind of index is this? So, all right, so um, that's some existing uh, feature that make it unique and you fast. So we're just um, going to go to the next phase and talking about the new features, uh, new performance features in 5.5. So I'm going through a lot of those features um, quickly. Uh, there are a lot of stuff to cover. Um, I think the main idea to bring home is that uh, NODB and Oracle is doing a lot of things uh, on the performance part. Uh, and make my, the MySQL and NODB faster and faster. So in 5.5, which is last year, uh, those are a list of the features we done um, uh, from the performance standpoint. And uh, I'm going to go through each of them quickly. Um, so uh, that's the list. So let's go just go each of them quickly. Uh, multiple, uh, multiple buffer pool instance. So this describes the uh, problem. Um, still, it comes down to a mutex that guarded uh, a buffer pool. So a lot of structure um, are being guarded by this uh, buffer pool mutex. And uh, it becomes a very hot mutex. It's uh, like a being uh, acquired like a 700K per second. And uh, if you look at it, it's like if held by 50% of the time, it's being held. So next one is uh, the table is uh, um, a performance schema. Uh, I'm not sure everyone from, uh, familiar with the performance schema. That's uh, another new feature in 5.5. 
and it shows you um, how mutex uh, and how those uh, um, latches uh, perform. Um, I'm going to talk about this performance schema a bit later. That's a new feature, but that's an example just shows you um, how many times uh, the ranking of, of the whole, whole mutex, all the mutex, and you see that buffer pool mutex is on the top. So how to solve this? The solution is kind of simple. Uh, we just uh, split the buffer pool into a multiple buffer pool instance. So that with splitting this buffer pool, you get um, kind of split the load into different uh, uh, pools. And the analyze shows that you won't be a, a, a quite held multiple mutex across these pools. So at most of the time, you will be doing some work in one of those buffer pools. So that kind of split the uh, uh, contention. And the end result is about 10% uh, on a read write on a 16 core. So the read performance is um, increased as well, because basically, you don't have this uh, mutex uh, um, contention anymore. So that's why we split the uh, multiple buffer pool. So in the future, we probably can bind, we also can bind uh, um, a particular table to a buffer pool. Then that if you have DBA that knows your application well, then you can utilize that. So uh, that's some other benefits you will come along uh, in the future. So this is a graph shows you that when we, after we actually split the uh, buffer pool, you get the uh, steady increase of the performance. So on the left side, this is on the um, y axis, it's the uh, TPS, transaction per second. So the left side is um, without the uh, buffer pool um, splitting, and on the right side, there's uh, eight uh, buffer pool. So you can see a steady increase of the uh, transaction per second. All right, the next feature uh, we've done in 5.5 is the uh, uh, increase the uh, crash recovery. So crash recovery, uh, if everyone knows, it comes along with uh, three phase. The scan phase decides uh, where we actually start the uh, recovery. Then we do redo, then we do undo. So there are two problems uh, in the older InnoDB. Uh, the first one is uh, scan is fairly slow. Um, the reason is that uh, we need to track the hash table size so that it doesn't um, exhausting the uh, uh, buffer pool. So the the design, the old design, is not um, well designed. It goes uh, calculate the hash table uh, by just traverse a list of the block allocated. So the the other question, the other problem is that um, we also get the uh, third page into a fresh list, and this. This fresh list is sorted on the uh, uh, LSN. The, um, that's a unique ID, identify the transaction. So the list can be large, and uh, you need to do a linear search to place that particular page in that transaction uh, fresh list. So this is, again, slow. So the solution. Uh, um, for each of them, the first one, uh, we actually cache the hash table size in the header. That's simple and effective. So the, for the second one, we actually build a, a structure uh, called a red black tree. That's uh, a kind of um, binary tree, uh, similar to binary tree, but it's also help you to, to find your place quickly. So whenever there's a, a new um, buffer comes in, uh, it can uh, go through this red black tree and find your position quickly. So this 
benchmark shows um, these two chains uh, done a remarkable job to uh, speed up the um, crash recovery. If you look at it, uh, five one, uh, just just uh, look at this example here. Uh, it was taking four hundred fifty six uh, minute just to do a crash recovery. So that's about seven hours. So that's kind of intolerable to a lot of uh, uh, web company or whatever that just spend that much time to actually uh, recover. Uh, now it just increased to 40 minutes. So that's 32 times faster. And you're splitting all those um, different phase and you see that how much time actually was saved uh, because of those two optimization. So those simple kind of work really helps to do a lot of a remarkable job to get your uh, performance uh, up. So again, that's another um, uh, DB2 test uh, shows how much faster uh, it uh, shortened the time from three hour to 20 minutes. So similar result, yes. Can you go back to that next slide? Yeah. Hmm. All right, doesn't go back. <laughs> All right, let's do it this way. Okay. Just a quick question on that one. How yeah. It's, it's a little shocking because it's recovering on a 20 minute benchmark run, it's recovering in 14. Uh huh. So, uh, you, are you you're saying the still longer than you expected? Well, I mean, isn't, when you're benchmarking, you're probably running with lots of clients. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. So would you say this is mostly because this bench is just lots of reads and not a lot of writes? Uh, well, this is a read-write test. So sure. basically... Well, this uh, is bench transaction, I mean, there's lots, of, lots more reads than there are writes. Well, yeah. I think a bench, well, you have... Uh, you can test a different right. You, you can specify it's a read test or it's a read-write test. Um, for from this amount of the uh, uh, recovery, I don't think it's just simple reads. There will be a lot of writes happening. And I mean, I'm curious because the next slide where it's with DBT2, which is more like TPCC. Yeah, TPCC kind of uh, benchmark. Like the yes. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's kind of very specified to the test itself. Yeah, yeah. TPCC is more contained to a few tables. So a lot of time, the TPCC can have, have everything in memory. It's, it's not a very large test. Okay. All right, so we talk about insert buffering. Um, that's very effective. Now we uh, extend this to, to all kinds, of, including the deletes. So that anything, um, any updates, any deletes, any purge that going to come into the secondary index, now it's cached. So whenever next time the leaf page bring into the uh, buffer, then you merge it. So that's just group all those uh, uh, fragmented uh, random uh, uh, I.O. into a sequential I.O. So there, yeah. so that's uh, the uh, uh, workload that will help uh, in this by this uh, change buffering. Uh, if it's very I/O bound, have a lot of secondary index, a lot of DML happening, it will be benefiting from this uh, extension of the change buffering. So yeah, so the, another benchmark shows how fast the deletes goes. So the, the lead uh, used to be 50 rows per second, now it's 8,000 rows per second. So
so it's it's a lot faster uh, after we extend this uh, um, insert buffering uh, to the deletes. Okay, uh, next one is the uh, support for native I.O. on Linux. So we used to do um, kind of simulated uh, asynchronized I.O. Uh, on all platforms except the uh, Windows. Uh, simulated AIO is not really uh, asynchronized. It's still synchronized in, from the OS perspective. So now with the uh, um, new libAIO uh, supported on the uh, Linux, we uh, utilize this and make the, uh, this I.O. asynchronized. So you can pump as many I.O.s to the uh, kernel uh, as you want. So it's truly uh, asynchronous I.O. So it just uh, uh, apparently uh, give you a lot of scalability and, uh, and uh, performance enhancement. And the way the company is for Yes. So the Well, it depends on the I.O. Sometimes I don't need to wait a complete. I can just go yeah, on. So what I mean in this case is, uh, let's say you have a, uh, a data head, right? Random data head. You, uh, the, you send it back to I.O. and do that I request to this data head in. Uh-huh. So, Yes. Yeah, uh, we have a thread actually waiting for that uh, to be uh, complete. But I mean, is it completion of the request or is it completion of the batch? Uh, actually, uh, well, we wait for the, uh, uh, the, the particular request for the I.O. to oh, complete. So it's yes. Yes. yes, 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 yes. Okay, so this is another feature called the multiple rollback segment. So rollback uh, is definitely needed. Uh, we need to do a logging uh, for the uh, uh, any transaction. So the rollback used to be um, under one case, uh, 1023. Uh, so you cannot have more than one case uh, transaction at a time, otherwise you don't have enough rollback segment to support that. So this is uh, the feature, just uh, increase that. Um, this is a scal scalability uh, solution, but also because of this uh, uh, increase, uh, this reduce the contention on the uh, particular rollback segment mutex. Uh, so we have 128 uh, different uh, Segment. Each segment has a 1K uh, rollback uh, log. So then you have 128 uh, mutex. You also like a buffer pool mutex. You split out the uh, uh, contention on that particular mutex. So this also helps in performance. The next one is the uh, purge scheduling. Uh, the purge, uh, I'm not sure everyone knows, the purge thing, it's kind of happening in the background. Uh, so for, because of supporting MVCC, uh, when you delete a row, uh, it's not uh, being deleted right away. It still stay in the uh, uh, database. The only time it can be deleted is one actually there's no transaction actually need to access it. So the oldest the transaction uh, yes, uh, current running is older than the, this particular row's transaction ID. Then this particular transaction can be, uh, uh, this particular uh, delete can be uh, purged uh, from the cache. So it was performed by uh, the master thread um, in the InnoDB. And you know, master thread do a lot of things other than uh, uh, do the purge, it also do the checkpointing. 
is also do the uh, uh, flush the dirty page. So if, if it is a very high uh, um, throughput of the DML, then you, the purge thread probably uh, cannot catch up um, yeah, in the mass thread because mass thread is all busy. Also, if it affects other uh, activities, uh, for example, you cannot flush the dirty page, then you have to wait uh, for the new page to bring into the buffer. So the solution is actually uh, it allocates a new dedicated thread for the purpose of the purging. So the end result, we just jump to the end result. Um, you can see the uh, purge uh, became more stable. It used to be uh, uh, when you look at a TPS, every once in a while it does a, a, a purge, then affects all the uh, other uh, activity, and just the TPS goes drop down uh, very significantly. Now it's getting smoothed out. Also, the checkpointing, uh, you see the checkpointing activity, it's not affected uh, as well. All right. So, any questions so far? Is that a lot of things? I think it just. I'm just rambling through all the uh, new features. Um, sometimes it's just getting tedious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering, is um, MLDB available on MySQL 5? You know, not 5.5, but the original. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, most people use my ISM for a few reasons. Uh, one is the full text search. Uh, if you use full text search, uh, we support the full text search starting 5.6. Uh, the other is uh, the, uh, use the uh, uh, temp table. They have pretty uh, fast uh, temp table um, because it's non-transactional. So, so they have this. Uh, another reason is uh, some GIS index that's in the uh, my ISM, not in the NODB, but we're going to support that as well. So, um, if if depends on your application whether you, they use uh, um, um, FTS full text search, whether they use uh, GIS index. If they don't, then you can just upgrade to to the uh, NODB. Yeah, so that's two diff uh, main reasons most of people why are still using my ISM. Does uh, NLDB have like merge tables like ISM has? What is uh, uh, merge table where you take two similar tables and merge them into one sort of virtual table? Um, so that's kind of a, a DDL that we not yet support. Um, we do support starting spot online, add column, drop column, uh, those kind of things, uh, but we don't uh, support merge table. Also, the, uh, from the uh, partition, uh, we don't have native partition table in, uh, in NODB. Um, but merge table, yeah, we, if it's a, uh, it's a big problem for you guys. Uh, we'll I use it, I use it a couple of oh, okay. Okay, so why you actually merge table? It needs to be just saying two table. You think? Okay. 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 Yeah, this is something that we can think of. I don't see this particular on the list. Of, uh, they have a huge list because they're going to. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so they have a huge list of the uh, difference between my ISM and uh, uh, NODB because we're going to obsolete uh, my ISM. Uh, so anything that particular to my ISM, uh, a lot of users are using it, and we can do support it in NODB. Okay, um, one, one more question, uh, you, um, okay. 
Yeah. So why do you think the mice are moving up the street? Well, uh, we're going to eventually no longer support my ISM. Uh, what, you, you're talking about the uh, um, the system table in MySQL. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's uh, there's some discussion on that uh, because there are two different system table, but that's in MySQL. It's not um, in my ISM. Well, in MySQL, they Yes. Are you talking about if I am those kind of thing? Are you talking about uh, uh, FIM file or those? Yeah, I'm saying in the MySQL uh, database, like user, yes. table, table, you can say store procedures, you can make them. Uh -huh. the MySQL, right? Uh, no, the, you say talking about store procedure, or those are in MySQL? Well, they're in the MySQL database, you know, the MySQL database. Oh, yeah, yeah. MySQL database. Yes. Uh, well, from our, are you talking about the metadata in the, uh, or are you talking about the actual user data? I'm, I'm not thinking of the FRM files, right? I'm thinking uh, yeah. of the system table, which contains the definition of the users, time zones, health tables. Oh, okay. Inside the MySQL data. Okay. So those will still be there. Those won't, won't yeah, so be I'm, I'm going away. Well, those eventually, those kind of things still, while you move to InnoDB, uh, uh, those kind of system information, actually, those will move to InnoDB as well. Okay. Yes? Yes. That this is making me think I maybe should consider migrating my databases and full tables over to you know, DB. Okay, good. The question is if I decide to do that, should I upgrade to five or what is it, five, six now? Right. So oh, I, I think most people will start with uh, f uh, five, five. Uh, a lot of people still in five, one. Uh, uh, five, six, we're going to J this year, so it's not. Uh, now, uh, usually people don't do uh, right away, so a stable release is 5.5. Yeah, I, I think you should pass 5.1. Yeah. yeah. Talking about a full text search? No, I'm saying besides full text search, another thing which fights a lot of people trying to convert my something to NDB is multi column auto incrementing. Multi column auto incrementing. Auto increment, okay. My son I can have multi column in the auto incrementing. Oh, okay. Okay, so yeah. That, that's a good one. Uh, so I don't know the, 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 the any. Planning on this multi-column auto increment uh, part, uh, it's all at least uh, not on my radar. So we we're going to talk about it. so so you have some application use this multi-column auto increment. Yeah, it's it's rather common. Okay, okay, okay. So I, I make notes of this, and we 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 can we can uh, check that for you. Okay, so this is a, a benchmark on the Linux. Uh, that's read-only. Uh, 
uh, you see uh, five five is uh, a lot more uh, scalable than five one. So that's the combine all the feature we just talked about, and this is the end result. Jimmy, yeah. Can you go back Oh, uh, <laughs> right, right. So, so there are small, uh, small difference in five five eight. Um, uh, it has uh, it did balance the scalability. Well, this is uh, something I need to the check. Lines completely below yeah, the, uh, yeah, the yeah. Line yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah, right. Yeah, um, yeah. That that's something that um, uh, I need to check. Uh, uh, certainly, yeah. You you have a, a quick eye. <laughs> I, I benchmark for a living, so I did Oh, good, good, good. Okay. So this one is the uh, uh, read-write uh, benchmark. Uh, let's see uh, the purple. Yeah, sometimes it's 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 still slower. Is it, um, are these out of, out of memory benchmarks? Is the database here bigger than main memory? Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, yeah. Most of the time, yeah. This one l looks like a, it's all in memory. It's all in memory. 32 gig of RAM, uh, it's one million row. Um, it's just one table. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is a, a scalability test. So it's uh, 554 and 553 and 5.1. Again, that's another uh, read-only scalability. So it's it's it, compared to five one, definitely it's it's a lot faster, and scale a lot better. Okay, so the the next part is also we added a lot of uh, performance uh, uh, diagnosis too uh, in five five. Uh, one is the uh, performance schema. So remember the um, uh, mutex uh, table I showed you earlier. Um, so all the uh, mutex uh, read write logs, threads, and I/O are now in the uh, performance schema. So performance schema is by default built into, but it's turned off by default. Uh, the reason being that is uh, the performance schema itself has um, some uh, performance impact on the server. It's so now about two, three percent impact. So itself, it's turned off by default. So what you can get is that you do some selection into this uh, performance DB. Uh, in the performance DB, there's a called mutex in instance table. So you can just do a select and see what kind of mutex get instrumented. And uh, this is what kind of actually sled, uh, thread is uh, running in your database. Okay, you also can check uh, whether the server is being blocked in some particular mutex. So this shows you the uh, thread is running on a particular uh, line as whatever the uh, uh, I and what line and that particular mutex is being blocked. And you can also can do uh, uh, a history uh, table. Shows you that um, uh, in the, hu uh, the running history, what kind of mutex, how much time they spent on each of those mutex. Uh, RW lock. So this is an example. Uh, I think we showed it earlier that buffer pool mutex is on the top. And it's a ranking of all, all, all different mutex. So that's for a lot of for our own development. Um, if it's advanced uh, DBA, like uh, a lot of them in Facebook and Google, they also do a lot of analysis on the 
um, those kind of hot, um, cold section. So that shows you uh, what kind of mutex being held most of the time. Okay. So we also add another one called. Uh, oh. So about this performance schema, any of you guys interested uh, from the user standpoint, actually it's not useful to you or haven't even looked at it most of them, I think. Okay. <laughs> Index, uh, index lock. Yeah, I think uh, that's uh, uh, that's a big issue. I think there will be a patch coming in five six uh, for the index lock. Uh, was discussed because a lot of people uh, are talking about this. Uh, this uh, it's a contention point. So. Well, the index lock uh, is uh, when you do a lot of uh, those operations, like splitting or those things, uh, a lot of those access, they, they actually held the uh, index lock. It's a, it's a latch. It's a latch on the index. Yeah. yeah. So for NODB, I think uh, a lot of those operations, including splitting and search, it's now not very optimized, uh, yeah. But has that issue been dealt with in uh, the Kona Facebook patch? Has it been fixed in other sources or other patches? Um, I, I know there's something, I think, I'm not sure in the Facebook patch they have something that for this, but it, it's, it's had been a, a big problem for them to always bring that up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. right. So, so when NODB splits all those things, it's sometimes it locks the holding index. So ideally, you don't do that. Because you can do a, like a, those split can bottom up. You just have different. Uh, latch uh, locking mechanism than the one in search, so that they don't they don't, they don't uh, affect each other. But is that somewhat mitigated by the, uh, the buffer secondary indexes? Uh, you're saying the hash index, all those uh, adaptive uh, uh, hash. Buffer, the, the yeah, adaptive hash index. Okay. Is, is the removal of that, of that lock, will that seriously open the floodgates for performance on the DB, or is it something that I can call Well, I think it depends. It's hooked to more, so then you have the modification inside of the buffer pool, right? Because that's what you can do. You can tell them that you can do the modification that's in the buffer pool, right? Okay. Right, so that's what you would be looking at. But that can be a serious contention that you have to do Yeah, because uh, when you split, it's not, it's the whole index structure is changing. So if you do something, buffer play doesn't, doesn't help. But what many people do, right, is uh, you can work out that they have a hardware Yeah. Okay, so uh, we also introduced a new monitor uh, table uh, in the information schema. Uh, it, it, it's a basic, uh, basically a counter Table. So it uh, has a lot of counter. Uh, now it's about almost over 200 counters uh, in that matrix table. So you can also select uh, uh, from this information schema in ODB matrix table and see a lot of counters. Um, most of those counters um, are uh, turned off by default, except those in the show in ODB status. 
So in the InnoDB status, it used to be a lot of country, like um, how many buffer uh, page read, how many buffer page write. Those will by default uh, turned on. So eventually, we try to um, substitute the uh, show InnoDB status variable to buy this uh, 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 matrix table. So for other counters, you can turn on, turn off uh, using a set command. So basically, you can turn on particularly, like you want to know a table being opened how many times. You can just say set InnoDB monitor enable uh, server table open. That's a particular counter name. And once it turned on, there are two counting, and you can turn it off, and then you can see the result. So you can know for a period of time uh, how many, like uh, how many DDL, how many uh, insert happen, how many deletes happen. Um, so. Yeah, it's still global, so we, we want to make it uh, uh, in session level, but currently it's, it's still global. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we finished 5.5, five, five. we come into 5.6. Um, so again, uh, we have a lot of uh, performance feature in 5.6. Um, one notable rule is that kernel mutex being split to a lot of different uh, mutex. So uh, we used to have a, a so-called kernel mutex. It's like a, a, a server mutex is being used for a lot of purpose. So it become also congested. Other than the uh, buffer pool mutex we look at, it, this is uh, like a, also a, in the top list. So when we look at the performance schema results, we notice that, then we, we decide to actually uh, split it for whatever uh, different purpose you look at it as lock weight mutex, lock system mutex. It used to be all used to uh, use kernel mutex. So we split this uh, uh, kernel mutex into different mutex. OK, multi-thread purge, so we just Talk about the purge, how purge affecting the MR thread. Um, it becomes um, MR thread again unst un unstable, and then we decide to have a dedicated uh, purge thread. Now, in this 5.6 release, you have multiple uh, purge thread. So that gives you um, capability of um, purge quickly. So you can tune this um, because if you have a lot of deletes happening, sometimes purge cannot keep up. So you now have multiple threaded uh, purge. So next is that uh, also related to the buffer pool contention we talked about in 5.5. Five, um, this actually uh, used to be a mutex uh, guarded this uh, structures in the buffer pool. So we split uh, in 5.5, we actually split it into multiple buffer pool. Uh, now in this one, we found out that we can just make it a lot, a lot of things actually just read. So we just make it this mutex into a latch. So you have shear latch, which is basically if you have multiple threads reading it, you don't, uh, they don't block each other. Uh, mutex, you block at each other, uh, no matter whether you read or write. Um, so for latch, if everyone is just looking at it, um, you can use shared latch. So it, it apparently improves concurrency. That's the, uh, also the performance. So those are, it is, uh, when I bring this, just to show you an example we're doing, how we're doing to improve the performance. So that's very uh, detailed. Okay, so another interesting feature is that um, I think that's come also from the Pacona. Uh, you can dump and restore buffer pool uh, for faster startup. Basically, you can dump, dump the buffer pool, and the next time you start it up, uh, it just brings those, all these pages into the buffer. It's like a preloading, uh, so that you started, you don't need to do a warm, warm up. So a lot of things, a lot of time people do a warm up. And uh, now you don't need to do warm up. We just bring everything used to be in the buffer pool and back into the buffer pool after you start up. So it's, it's like uh, your computer have a hibernate kind of 
function, I can shut it down. But before that, I dump everything in the buffer pool. Next time I read, everything you used to be in the buffer pool is still in the buffer pool. So that's, that's also an interesting feature. Yeah. Um, well, um, so it, it doesn't really dump the content of the buffer pool. Uh, it's just saying that buffer pool is which page. So it records the actual the page number for each buffer. So next time, it just read this particular page into the buffer. So what it says, because uh, whatever in the buffer uh, is just a replicate or whatever on the disk. So I don't need to dump the content. If it's 24 gig, I don't need to actually dump 24 gig to the, to the disk. I just dump the page number. So you shut down pretty much immediately. Yeah, yeah. And Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have a checkpoint on shutdown, right? Yeah. If it, yeah. Okay, so there is a. Uh, the next one is uh, reduce contention do during the uh, file extension. So we f extend the file every once in a while, one run out of the space. So whenever you do that, you hold a mutex, and that blocks all the I.O. happening. So now they have um, using a different structure, using a flag. So making this mutex uh, um, hold time to a very short time, and we just turn on this flag saying this file is being extended and we don't block other uh, I.O. happening in this particular um, uh, server. Next one is the uh, uh, multiple range read and uh, uh, index condition push down. So that's also been done along with MySQL. So in the uh, QP, uh, it's a call cooperation with uh, query processing and the NODB. So when you have um, a query that involves a lot of index, uh, basically you do a multiple range read. So you're just saying, I'm going to read uh, this range index and that range index. Then uh, when we come to NODB, we look at the uh, um, disk block of the one we're going to read. We just sort them so that it's no longer random. It's become a, a sequential read. Uh, who has that? Uh, MariaDB. Uh, MariaDB. Yeah, so in the case, uh, if they have this MRR, when uh, they can get to primary key points, then they sort those for oh. primary key. Oh, OK. So, so they actually uh, sort on the primary key. Yes, yeah, so when you have a bunch of access rows on the secondary key, they will take them and then reaccess in the primary uh, in the sort order. Oh, OK, OK. So we don't have that right now, but uh, uh, we actually saw that on the, on the blocks, on the physical uh, blocks. Uh, so it's, so kind of it, it's kind of similar because one is sorted on primary key, which also uh, uh, d depends on how, frag how fragment you, your, your primary key is because it still can be physically in different places, yeah, yeah. right? So, but we saw on the uh, uh, physical uh, block uh, number, so it's even better, I think, than the primary key because you have sorted the primary key, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they are yeah, okay. sorted on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, yeah. That's something we can also consider. So, that, that, yeah, that's an interesting one. OK, I need to go faster. I only have a few minutes left. So uh, index push down, uh, index condition push down, that's, uh, I think, a previous um, 
uh, talker also talk about. Uh, so we, instead of fetching the whole row for the result and the processing the uh, uh, query processing layer, we actually uh, just get whatever row you need uh, in the storage layer. Okay, so we also added a lot of uh, uh, table, uh, di diagnostic table in, the, uh, uh, in this release. Basically, we also can, you can dump the whole buffer pool uh, into an information schema table. So you look at uh, how many index table for which particular table are in the uh, buffer pool. So I think Facebook is using that uh, quite a bit to study their application. So how, how the buffer pool looks like at that time. So we also add the uh, um, system tables, information schema matrix table we talked about. Um, CRC32, that's a checksum. Uh, there's a hardware support you know, for the checksum, so we actually utilize that. So you can uh, do a faster checksum on a page. Okay, um, so we also special handle the uh, read-only transactions. Um, so now, if you are a read-only transaction, uh, non-locking read-only transaction, we, uh, we will mark them and so that it won't be uh, used to, to generate the uh, uh, read view. Uh, read view won't filter out those uh, read-only transactions. Uh, so also read-only transactions, sometimes it doesn't need a lot of uh, those kind of lock. So we we'll also skip that. So it, it, you can see a, a dramatic, also dramatic uh, uh, improvement uh, in terms of the uh, point to select read-only transactions. So it, it's very obvious um, improvement. Okay, so these are a list of uh, uh, small improvement from, on, on the also performance related, as for example, deadlock detection is a problem. So we do some optimization in terms of this graph search. Is, uh, in, in some cases, it doesn't need to be recursive. So also make a, a page size smaller because uh, SSD sometimes it has a 4K uh, unit. So we make it, you have, can have 4K uh, page size. So you don't need to read uh, for 16K. The watch mutex? Uh, the the uh, transaction sys T? Yeah, so why a change to a mutex? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, but RW lock is uh, it's more expensive when you try to get RW lock. If you have like uh, this kind of transaction, uh, this kind of uh, um, access to a uh, structure quickly, you, you just use a mutex instead of, of RW lock. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, this is a, a, a position stats will be turned on by default. Uh, this position stacks uh, is something new in 5.5. And also, um, flushing, they tune the flushing algorithm uh, uh, quickly. Uh, uh, flushing used to be unstable. It's like, uh, uh, also, it's, it's a spike every once in a while. So they have a uh, um, uh, new algorithm make the flushing more stable. So that, there's one. The major, for five, major uh, feature for 5.6 is the online operation. So you can do a lot of online operation in 5.6 release. You can uh, rebuild the uh, index. You can add drop column, um, change row format, uh, rename column, um, add foreign key. Um, there's some catch on the foreign key part, but um, still um, a lot of operation can be online. Uh, for the DDL. Okay, so this is a quick uh, show on the uh, uh, OLTP read-write um, difference. So a re a remove lock open, that's in the MySQL. Um, so it shows pretty good result. All right, so another thing is about NoSQL access to NODB with memcached. So I have another talk in the afternoon, five o'clock something, um, about this particular memcached access uh, to the NODB. 
So you see some, some uh, results. Um, it's fairly fast, uh, almost uh, similar to Memcached itself. That's done by uh, Yoshinori, who is uh, down those handle socket. I'm not sure you read his, his article on the handle socket. So that's the benchmark he did. Uh, we're almost uh, even faster than the handle socket. So we'll, I will go through that uh, in the afternoon. So OK, good. So we finished that almost on time. Uh, any more question? Uh, All right, okay, thanks everyone. Yeah, okay. Cloud stacks are everywhere. This is the way to, to better utilize uh, all your resources and it makes managing all your resources pretty easy. All of the innovation is happening in open source. The, the collaborative nature and of the uh, you know of the community and, and the speed at which these uh, these you know these these deficiencies, these bugs are getting discovered and then fixed is a uh, thing that really shows the power of the, you know, of the open source community. It is global and it's definitely because of the users. Community people are extremely friendly and uh, always ready to help. If you go on to IRC any day, you'll see these guys helping each other out and they're all doing it like in a selfless manner. The product is transparent for everyone. Everyone can look at the code base. Um, Everyone can see how CloudStack is, is being built. Nothing, nothing is proprietary. Everything is open. In many ways, it's absolutely vital to the, to the ongoing health of CloudStack. The most exciting event uh, in recent memory for me uh, was our first developer boot camp. Uh, and you know, our call gave people, I think, maybe two weeks notice to come attend. I was expecting 25 or, or 30 people. Uh, so we ended up with uh, 87 <laughs> people uh, and had to go get more chairs uh, into the room twice. Everything within cloud computing is commodity and is open source. And so I, I don't think that you will, uh, you, you'll see anywhere where open source is not pervasive in cloud computing. And so I, I, think, it's, uh, I think it's an assumption, I think. When you talk about cloud computing, you're really talking about open source cloud computing. CloudStack is a robust solution for large deployments. You have dozens of data centers and thousands of servers in each data center. Uh, these um, uh, hardware is going to fail and CloudStack is designed to handle, number one, that mass scale, number two, it's designed to handle the failure that inevitably happens uh, in large deployments. We started working on CloudStack over four years ago, uh, and you know it was the original set of people working on it uh, had a background of delivering software to telcos and service providers. Lots of QA, lots of users actually using it. High availability is the key feature. Uh, multiple hypervisor support, uh, different network models, you can pick up whatever suits you better. Cloudstack management server can be deployed in different physical machines. It definitely has a huge footprint, it's being deployed everywhere. There's a major movie studio that uh, um, they were using Cloudstack, they were using it to transcode video, and I thought that was terribly fascinating. What I found more fascinating is what they did during lunch, where they would spin up, uh, you know, 50 or 60 game servers. And then, as soon as lunch was over, they would destroy all the instances and go back to doing real work. CloudStack is vast; uh, it touches so many different aspects, and there's no one person that's kind of like 
a master of all those realms. I think cloud stack as a project is going to be uh, one of the leaders simply because it's some of the most featureful and, and, uh, and robust platforms out there. I don't see any limits with the cloud stack. When we created Asterisk over a decade ago, we could not have imagined that Asterisk would not only become the most widely adopted open source communication software on the planet, but that it would impact the entire industry in the way that it has. Today, Asterisk has found its way into more than 170 countries and virtually every Fortune 1000 company. The success of Asterisk has enabled a transition of power from the hands of the traditional proprietary phone vendors into the hands of the users and administrators of phone systems. Using this power, our customers have created all sorts of business-changing applications, from small office phone systems to mission-critical call centers to international carrier networks. In fact, there's even an entire country whose communications infrastructure runs on asterisks. Digium has always been about creating technology that expands communications capabilities in ways that we could never have imagined. And that's part of what's game-changing about Digium. Today, we're doing it again, this time by introducing a new family of HDIP phones that extends control of the user all the way to the desktop. The launch of these new products represents the next phase in Digium's history of innovation. These are the first and only IP phones designed to fully leverage the power of Asterisk. When we first discussed our expectations for building a family of phones for use with Asterisk, our requirements were pretty simple. We asked the team to build the phones such that they were easy to install, integrate, provision, and use. I think you'll soon agree our engineers have delivered on that goal. User feedback is validating that when it comes to operation with Asterisk based systems, including our own SwitchFox based product, these are the easiest to use, best integrated, most interoperable products on the market today. The Digium family of phones will initially include three IP desk phones, uniquely designed to complement any Asterisk or SwitchFox based solution. These phones are different for a number of reasons. First, they're exclusively designed for use with Asterisk. Secondly, we've made it really easy to auto-discover and provision the phones. Next, we've made it easy for the phones to access information inside of Asterisk, allowing tight coupling between an application and the phone. Additionally, we've created an applications engine that allows users and developers to create and run their own apps on the phone. And finally, we've done all of this at a very compelling price point. At Digium, we're always thinking of ways to give our customers the best value in business phone systems and also give them the power to create their own solutions for any communications challenge. We'll continue to push the boundaries, not only to make Asterisk cooler and faster and more technologically feature rich, but to make Asterisk and VoIP communications even easier. And together, we'll change the way the world communicates. Again.